I had like all these melodies in my head and all these melodies that I played on the piano. And I felt like if I, if I learned how to produce those melodies too, I, it could be a cool track. I started taking piano lessons when I was like six years old. It was my mom who wanted me to do it, but uh, and it, I guess like in the beginning I didn't like really enjoy it. I was like I just did it because my mom wanted me to do it. But after a couple of years, when I like started learning some songs, I started really getting into it. I just composed melodies on the piano, and then I did that for a couple of years. And then I heard about Avicii in 2009. And before that, I wasn't really into electronic music. I, I listened to some songs, but. It wasn't, I listened more to like the bands, Coldplay, Red Hot Chili Peppers and The Killers and stuff like that. Uh, but then I got really inspired by Avicii and, and his style of, of music. Uh, so I bought Logic Studio and I bought like a MIDI keyboard and just like learned myself how to produce. When did that actually start happening where people started sharing your music? Because I'm assuming your first couple had like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, it was just like a couple of hundred plays and then I remember I the first song that actually got blogged was um, my remix of Passenger Let Her Go. How did you find Miles and, and sign with him? I guess it was Miles who, who found me. And I just like, I was studying actually in Edinburgh. I was studying business and finance. And then I just posted remixes online uh, on SoundCloud. And then um, Miles just reached out to me. When I first started managing him, I was like, hey, do you want to do any shows? You know, as a manager, your job is, you know, they, these guys want to play, you know, get them shows, right? That's like sort of a big, usually when you sign an artist, like, all I want to do is play. He actually didn't know how to DJ, so we didn't even, <laughs> we wouldn't even focus on shows. My first eight months of managing him, we didn't play a single show, which was actually incredible because it allowed us to build an online hype. It allowed us to build a fan base and everyone was sort of like, who is this guy? He hasn't played. I want to see him. I think people were just hearing the same stuff. And you know, there's a point where like, you know, progressive house or whatever you want to call it, like, you know, 128 BPM, like, you know, a couple years ago, that was the new hot thing. That was what everyone wanted to hear. You know, they wanted to go and dance really fast or whatever it is. They wanted to go to a party. And now it's like, you know, there's been so much of it. Kaigo has now come with a new genre. I guess maybe it was because there's like there's no trouble, like there's no beaches and like the summer is very short in Norway. So maybe I was just like I was sitting in my room dreaming about summer, dreaming about beaches and dreaming. And so I, maybe that was the reason why I started making that music I make today. Do you like the label Tropical House? Is that appropriate or? Yeah, I guess I guess it makes sense because it's like it's it's music that fits for the summer. But uh, I I don't really like uh, I don't really classify my own tracks Tropical House because I. I I kind of like just look at it as music. I don't want to like put myself into one genre. When you when you do the Marvin Gaye song, was that completely a bootleg and you just did that on your own? And yeah, I just found a cappella online on, on YouTube actually. What do, what do the rights look like for that? Because I know, uh, for example, Blurred Lines sampled Marvin Gaye and, and they were sued. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, you're an artist in your bedroom pulling off acapellas off YouTube. Um, did that ever cross your mind about like rights and, and that? Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely did cross my mind. But I feel like, like if you if I didn't make any like money of that song, I just posted it for free. And like if if I was about if I was selling that song without getting the rights, that would be that would be a problem, and I could get sued. But uh, if you just post stuff online and it's for free, like, I can feel like the worst thing that could happen was like they contact me and tell me to take it down. Did they ever do that? No, they didn't, and we actually got it cleared. You know, it wasn't that we made money off SoundCloud, it was the fact that he became popular off that streaming platform. And when you become popular off that streaming platform, you're building a fan base. And when you're building a fan base, promoters are like, whoa, this kid's worth tickets in the market. So then they want to book you to headline their festival or play at their festival. And, you know, yes, does, you know, streaming world make a ton of money just based off streaming? You know, that's, you know, that's up in the air, but the results that happen if you have, you know, if you're the fast artist to reach a billion streams or if you've got, you know, over hundreds of million plays on SoundCloud or even on Apple Music, whatever it is, it's actually the results uh, that really affect, you know, your, like, your outcome. A lot of electronic artists like yourself, they, most of the money's made actually in touring. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes guys play two or three shows in a day. You're kind of not taking that path. It's almost like a more reserved 
maybe a show here, maybe a show there, but it's not like the crazy schedules that you see, like maybe Stevie Aoki or Skrillex do. Yeah, I guess like I, I did a couple of tours in the beginning where I, I did 22 shows in 23 days, and I just like it's it's I'm I'm not built that way. I'm not I'm not like those guys. I, I don't understand how to do it. I just get so exhausted. And I I don't really like I can't make music on on tour. I I like I had to go to the studio or back home where I have like a keyboard. Uh, so I just felt like when I was touring, it was just like it was affecting the music. I, like I couldn't I couldn't produce any music. So that's why I'm trying to to keep a balance.